meaningful role in the global internet and engage with the organizations that oversee critical internet infrastructure. It's a platform to raise standards and expectations, to facilitate African innovation and to promote African social economic development. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, uh, Yankee, for uh, your introduction on Dot Africa. Now I'd like to give uh, the floor to our colleague uh, Mark Elkins to uh, uh, give us uh, some information on uniform and the uh, process. Thank you. Mark, you have five minutes. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Elkins, and uh, at the moment I'm trying to wear my Uniforum hat. So who is Uniforum? Who is this company that you have all placed your trust in to uh, uh, run the technical side of Dot Africa? And that's what I am trying would like to try and explain today. Well, let's step back in history and, and, and see where Uniforum came from. Uh, 1985, I was in South Africa and I started working for a company called Olivetti. Ol Olivetti was selling Unix-type products and uh, along, along with a number of other people in the, in, in the industry. And we got together, uh, we wanted to be able to jointly market Unix products within South Africa. We followed the lead of an, uh, an American company by the name of Slash User Slash Group. We became Slash User Slash Group Slash SA. Um, somewhere along the line, the name changed in the States to Uniforum, so we became Uniforum SA. And that was back probably in uh, 89, I think, in 1989. A few years, oh no, sorry, that happened in um, 80, around about 84, 85 as well. In 1987, I believe it was, the university network people managed to bring in .za into the country. Their interest was running ac.za for the academic world. Um, but somewhere along the line, a co.za was also created to cater for the commercial people within the country. In September 1989, um, uh, 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 at an ISP meeting, one of the very, uh, I think it was the second meeting we ever had, the people who were currently looking after CO.ZA decided that the political issues of trademarks and stuff was going to be too hot to handle, and so they asked for volunteers to look after it. And that is where Uniforum volunteered uh, as a non-profit organization to take over the administration of CO.ZA. Ever since then, CO.ZA has grown in strength uh, from year to year, uh, becoming fully automated, yes, using an, an old email system, but it works, and it's worked quite well. It's worked well enough that um, until recently we, uh, uh, up till about recently, we have 850, 860,000 domain names. That has enabled us to obviously collect a, a fair amount of money, but being a non-profit organization, uh, most of that money has been reinvested into the country. What I'm trying to to draw here now is, uh, is a picture of the beast or the animal that is Uniforum. So one of the projects or one of the organizations we created within Uniforum was something called Coza Cares. Coza Cares, what, is it, what has that been responsible for? Well, up until now, about two schools every month has been given an ICT lab in one of the disadvantaged areas. So we have 150 schools in South Africa where, which have computer labs where the money uh, on the cost of that lab was fully funded by Uniforum using CO.za registry fees. Uh, why I would like to brag about that is the sustainability rate of that has been around about 95%. In other words, only 5% of those labs have not worked after three or four years. I believe that's quite good. What else have we done? Well, we have labs in the schools, so we need something to teach them with, uh, some curriculum. So Uniforum has invested in, um, I take it most people have seen DSTV. There's a program channel on there called Mindset, and um, Uniforum has 
provided the money or the funds to provide the ICT aspects of mindset programs. And it's all been done in, with a Creative Commons license, which means other people can take it and use it, whatever. I see that as being useful for the rest of Africa as well. What else have we done? We saw that there was a need to help the Internet industry. Uh, we provide free DNS training courses uh, once every six months in Cape Town and Johannesburg. It's obviously designed for the people who live in the CO.za land, but that doesn't mean to say other people don't come and visit us on these courses. These are the sorts of... Uh, and we've also taught uh, teachers teaches how to teach ICT within schools. This is the nature of the beast of the organization called Uniforum, and this is what I see happening. Um, when Dot Africa does take off, and I really believe it does, these are the sorts of things and projects that I believe that can be um, passed over the rest of Africa. Uh, and that is who we are. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Mark, uh, for your uh, introduction on uh, what the uh, Uniforum can do for Africa when the project takes off. Uh, now we we'll give the floor to Bashir, who is the chairperson of the Dot Africa Steering Committee. Mohamed. Thank, thank you very much, McKen. Um, just for the organizers, if we can switch uh, the presentation on the on the slides. Um, I think, can we switch the the presentation on the slides? Yeah. I think it it was on for some time. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So uh, here we go. Uh, uh, my name is Mohamed El Bashir. Uh, I'm the chair of the steering committee of uh, of the Africa. Uh, I will tell you about the project, uh, where we stand now, uh, and the steering committee composition, what our objectives, and what our plans as well. Put there. I will start with the background. Uh, I'm sure all you know. I can. I can is the entity that's uh, run. Uh, 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 internet domain names, uh, infrastructure, and, and unique identifiers. ICANN is responsible for the coordination of, of, the, of, the, of the DNS system and ensure the stability of the internet. Uh, ICANN in 2011, in, in this meeting in Singapore, has officially opened the new GTLD program. What does that mean? Uh, that for the first, and I think for the second time, uh, applicants could apply for new GTL, these new generic top-level domains at, at the Internet route. And I can develop uh, a reference document called ap the Applicant Guidebook, which is basically lays out the requirement for applications and how it will be evaluated. Uh, and that Applicant Guidebook is already available online. So what should we expect? Where, as users, as 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 corporates, we should expect dot everything. And I'm sure you have seen uh, the the new application uh, list. Uh, it's brands, it's generic words, uh, it's everything. Uh, One thousand nine hundred application has been received. So it's a, it's a huge change in the inf internet uh, infrastructure. Uh, the new uh, process or the application started in uh, in April uh, 2012 this year application fee is 185,000 US dollars it's expensive and actually there was some work in ICANN uh, with uh, a committee called Jazz uh, and we have our friend Tijani who was in that that committee we're trying to support applic applicants from the developing world uh, as well uh, so uh, Uniform or ZDA Central Registry uh, has provided an application for South Africa uh, on behalf of the African Union and the, on the African continent. 
as I said, ICANN has received 1,900 applications. There were only 17 applications received from Africa, a small, tiny amount really for, from Africa. And I think let's, let's, uh, if Dora Africa is delegated, that could be an incentive for, in the next round for new applications to come from, from Africa. So, so what is Dot Africa means? Dot Africa is a continental top-level domain for Africa. It will use by the continent and it will use by anyone in the world. There is no restrictions in that. Individuals, uh, corporate, governments, businesses, uh, and anyone who associate themselves with, with Africa, they could use that domain. Uh, and it will pro could provide a huge access to the African customer base. So corporates worldwide could register Dot Africa to target the African market and the customers in the African market. As well, as it, it's a it's very uh, big opportunity for branding and marketing as well for, b for businesses in Africa and outside Africa targeting Africa. So who we are? Mark talked about uh, Uniforum as a technical uh, partner in, in, in the project and uh, registry operator. But there are different stakeholders involved in, in this project. Um, we have the African Union Commission uh, involved in the project as, as the sole uh, uh, endorser and backing up of the application. And we have the African uh, have national governments, African national governments who provided supporting letters and endorsement to the applications. And we have also intergovernmental organizations in Africa, like U UNSCA and other inter NEPAD, and other intergovernmental organizations. And we have Uniforum, or ZDA Central Registry, as a registry provider. Uh, and we have a community component uh, within the project. We have, that's represented, by the way, by the steering committee. The steering committee is a group of 15 persons representing CCTLE managers, representing uh, internet experts in Africa, representing registrars, technical community, and also ISOC uh, members. So it's, it's a group of, of, of a community coming together for this project. Um, uh, my friend from the AUC has spoken about um, uh, details about AUC and the, and the project, but I can say briefly there are a couple of, of official declarations at the ministerial levels and at the African head of state levels endorsing and supporting an application for that Africa. And I can name two, which is the Oliver Tambo declaration uh, for establishment of that Africa as an intercontinental top level domain to be used by businesses on individuals, and also the Abuja declarations, which is request the AUC to set uh, the modalities and st structures to implement that Africa. The African Union Commission, as has been said in the previous presentation, has um, uh, engaged in a tendering process and selected Uniforum uh, as, uh, as a, 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 a registry operator. So what are the requirements for uh, uh, a geo geographical TLD like like dot Africa. We need to understand this is because this is very important. Uh, ICANN requires that minimum 60 percent of the government at that region to provide support to that application. So that's minimum 60 percent of countries in Africa need to support any application that have Africa name. So that's a requirement by ICANN in, in the process. Currently, the Africa application have about 72% of current, uh, uh, individual government support letters uh, received and provided to ICANN. That, I think, is about 32 uh, or more than 32 uh, country. Uh, I'll talk uh, briefly about the steering committee responsibilities. It's uh, an overall project oversight because we have a project now and there is an oversight from the steering committee. It's also, it provides political and, and, uh, and moral and ethical leaders, leadership to the project and it helps in, uh, in the strategy and the policy development uh, of the project and also helps in the awareness, uh, raising awareness about Dot Africa. That the steering committee responsibilities. Who are the members or the people in, in this steering committee? 
we have, uh, as I told you, a multi-stakeholder steering committee. We have a representative of CCTLD managers. We have .bi, .ml, .ng Nigeria. We have Mary here. We have Egypt as well. And we have registrar community. The registrar community selected, uh, represented from themselves, who is Hamza uh, from, from Morocco, is the ICANN accredited registrar. We have the technical community represented by Afrinic. We have individual uh, African internet experts represented. I'm, uh, I'm sure you know many of the names currently displayed on this screen. And we have the African Union also in the steering committee, represented by Mokhtar and Moses. And we have the project uh, registry operator, Uniform, as, as, uh, as part of the steering committee. And we have observers as well, by the way. We have McCain representing UNA, uh, U, uh, uh, UNA ECA, and we have recently uh, uh, NEPAD as representative, uh, sorry, uh, uh, observers uh, within the steering committee. So you can see it's, uh, uh, it's a multi-stakeholder, uh, and we're trying to be inclusive. What are, what are the plans uh, in the future for Dot Africa? And Mark talked about benefits and, and providing benefits back, and this is this is one of the main principles of this application. We want to add value to the internet in Africa. And basically the idea is after post uh, ICANN delegation, after the, the evaluation process and delegation of Dot Africa, we're going to establish uh, Dot Africa Foundation, a non-profit, uh, open, multi-stakeholder um, uh, uh, entity that will lead Dot Africa after the delegation. And that responsibility is an ob and, and the main objectives of the foundation is to uh, provide the leadership and also set the policies and procedures, but importantly, uh, distribute any surplus or revenue coming from Dot Africa in projects uh, in Africa related to specific areas that has been uh, um, discussed. So, and I will talk about the focus areas that's currently the project is focusing on. We have main four areas that the foundation will focus on. The African CCTLD development, which is very important topic because we're not competing with the CCTLD uh, uh, registries in the countries. We are complementing the current CCTLDs and we will help them to develop. That's either in providing solutions for backends, uh, technical automating their systems or helping in policies. And that will be done in partnership with the African uh, FTLD, the African Top Level Domain Organization. We will be also working with registrars, African registrars, because currently we have about five African accredited registrars. And we think there is a room for more businesses to in African businesses to enter that market. Because when North Africa is delegated, we want more African registrars to be registering and in the front of their Africa are the, the, the I mean, and I can uh, accredited registrars from out of, outside the continent. Content development initiatives, this is also uh, another area of, 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 of interest, and ICT programs and projects. So the foundation will manage any surplus revenues coming from the TLD, and it will direct it to projects uh, in those areas. Uh, so who are the community? Um, we, we talked about the African Union and African Union Commission as part of that community. We have FTLD, the strategic partner. We have the steering com, which is re representing different stakeholders from CCLDs, from registrars, from the technical community, from individual uh, uh, experts. So this is our community now. From the operational level, uh, we have different stakeholders involved. Dot Africa will, will be uh, one of the new GTLD applications. That means it will have contractual relationship with ICANN. Uh, and, and that means also that uh, African Union Commission as a, as a sponsoring organization for that application also have a relationship. And we have the future foundation, it will be also there. We have also Uniform is part of this operational matrix. And we have registrars who will, will contract 
the registry operator as well. Uh, and we have the community uh, uh, involved uh, as well. So I think our message is for you to participate and engage. Uh, and uh, as you know, uh, w currently we are very open uh, to the community. You can find us through different channels. There is a social media channel in Facebook and Twitter. There is also, importantly, the website, which is africainonespace.org. And in that website, there is, there is an important uh, mailing list, which is the community mailing list, which is we want you to participate and engage, because this mailing list uh, will be the mailing list where we are going to ask for comments regarding policies and, and providing information about, about the project as well. Lastly, I want to, want to say one thing. Uh, recently, I'm, I'm sure you, you know that ICANN has uh, accepted uh, a change uh, uh, to the application of uh, DCA uh, or the Africa Connect uh, from dot, dot Africa to be dot Africa. And uh, as, as representing, that means currently there's two competing applications for dot Africa. And we think that competition is healthy. We, we are not neglecting that. And we think that it's good to have competition as long as it's a fair, positive competition, really. And, and that's our approach. That our, we will continue in our application. We think we, we have the government support and we have the community support. We will continue to be open and engage in others as well. But the, the reality now, there is two applications for that Africa, and I can need to decide in the evaluation process about which application is going to be uh, the winning application. Uh, and so lastly, I would like to thank you, and we are going to have um, other presentations as well, uh, more details about policies and, and other uh, aspects of the application. Uh, Bashir, for your uh, detailed presentation. Now, before we go to the discussions, we would like to give the floor to Mary, Mary Uduma, who is a member also of the steering committee, who is going also to speak about uh, policy issues. She's from Nigeria. Mary, you have uh, five minutes. Thank you very much. Um, um, I've already been introduced to be Mary from Nigeria and uh, <laughs> the voice of Dot NG. All right, and the voice of Nigeria in uh, at all um, global uh, internet-related um, meetings. Um, I'm the president of the organization that runs the .ng in Nigeria, and, um, uh, and we are, .ng is a member of AFTLD. And I'm going to talk about the .a, .africa um, uh, from the perspective of uh, the CCT TLDs in, uh, in Africa. And um, we know today that not all the countries have their uh, country could read litigated to them. Even somebody from Uganda said something yesterday, I don't know whether it's true or not, that Uganda's uh, CC, uh, um, C uh, CCTLD is being managed from outside um, Uganda or by a, a company. Some of the CCs are in the hands of, um, of universities. But um, we have taken the model of uh, a multi-stakeholder organization, uh, a self-regulatory organization, to run the dot .ng. And uh, .ng also is a member of the AFTLD, with a strategic partner to, to the dot .africa project. And uh, right from time, we had supported the dot .africa project. And we look at it as CCTLD as our own um, a common good. Just like we have the .eu, we can have the .africa as common good for all Africans. And uh, we support the fact that it should be run by Africans for the Africans and not by any other person. But f it should be supported by Africans, should be run by Africans for Africans. So that's the, the position. And coming to the CC, whether we are going to compete with uh, .africa, sure, we are going to compete with dot africa but we have different models we are going to benefit from dot africa in the sense that there could be capacity building from dot africa uh, who uh, the 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 the, the um, 
uh, technical partner for Dot Africa uh, is more 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 experience in the continent running CC uh, TLD in the continent that than most of us. So in terms of capacity building, we are going to do re uh, receive a lot of capacity building from from uh, Dot Africa project. We are also going to see the development of regi registries, making sure that all the countries in Africa, every country has its own CC managed by them for them for themselves and not some uh, we were in um, uh, West African IGF when one of the countries said that to register a domain in, a, in their country in West Africa you pay $200 how can that be and because it's managed by, uh, uh, by um, a co a one person and is outside the country so that is one of the things we are going to because they are going to help us build capacities to have uh, our people manage our country code top level domains, right? Um, the registry constituency, we discovered that um, we, we, we have several models. In Nigeria, we have the model of registry registrar model to, run, to, 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 to sell our, to register our .ng. And we found out that our, that our registrars are not competent enough, they don't understand the business, they don't even know what to do, they don't know that they will make money, a lot of money from it. Since we are not for profit, we are not making any profit, but that our registry constituency would be built up, would be developed, would be, would be encouraged. And um, just like Basius said, um, most of us will develop to become registrars for ICA. For, for the time being, you know, nominee, applied nominee is the registrar for .co.uk but they applied for the new gtld so i'm looking forward to our registries in in africa uh, or cctlds in africa to apply for uh, new gtld uh, the training as i said training will be will be key to us to be able to develop our registry so we'll be looking forward to working with dot uh, africa uh, to train other uh, African and the business it will bring for instance we want to identify with dot Africa there are a lot of uh, continental issues that will happen that would be I, I want to see e, uh, uh, AU, AUC not being on dot org but be on dot Africa or all the all the all the uh, um, uh, global uh, or, or, or bodies uh, or, or, or uh, continental bodies in Africa being on dot Africa, including the NEPAD being on dot Africa, and we would also see that our young people will be encouraged. We are looking at our young people knowing what it is to have business in domain name business. Uh, yesterday I was I was in I can meet uh, I can open forum and I suggested they should be champions. So our young people should should be brought into the domain name business so that they are inclusive and in the turn of the century we will see ourselves because the next billion domain names will be gotten from Africa. That is sure. So why dot Africa will be concentrating on dot Africa continental? The CCTLDs would also they have a lot. We have a lot of opportunity to develop our CCTLDs. The government, e, e government in our countries, I, I can't see those running on dot Africa. They will run on dot ng or dot eg or dot gh and not on dot com dot dot org dot net, but on dot our own CC. So, um, in as much it will be core petition that we are going to experience. Cooperation in the sense that we are going to collaborate and we are going to compete. That is the way we are looking at it. And uh, finally, I want to say that we are in the process of signing the MOU, the Association of Co uh, African Country Code Top Level Domain Names. Uh, we are in, uh, that is AFTLD. There is a template already that we are discussing because I'm one of the SCOM uh, members of the of FTLD, so we will be uh, signing the uh, the MOU with Dot uh, Africa Project, uh, with AUC Project uh, Stroke um, Uniform, because those are the major the AUC as the sponsor, Uniform as the technical partner. So we'll uh, sign agreement on on uh, partnering with uh, the AUC. If we had money as FTLD, we would have applied.
to be the Dot Africa uh, sponsor. But we are happy that our un umbrella body called the AUC is there, and we want to support, we are supporting AUC on this. Thank you.